said, no, I'll use the word anchor, baby. Mm. I tend to yawn like Chewbacca. Hey, it's Wit. Welcome back to Gold Pill. Gold Pill. That's <laughs> Welcome back to Gold Pilled. This is episode four. Okay. So we did a man on the street the other night downtown. And I'm going to release that. Well, you've already have seen it if you're on YouTube. I still have to figure out how to upload these to the to the to Spotify and Apple Music. I don't. I'm retarded with this stuff, and I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, we went downtown. First, we bought these like three hundred dollar uh, microphones. These lapel mics. I mean, they're expensive and they say they're the best. They are they look like, you know, the little square. I mean, they're like this big. I don't want to. They're like this big. And they have a blue blinking light. And, you know, I see the guys on YouTube with just like the little baby ones. And I wonder what that is. I mean, we already have them and we're working. We're using them. But we recorded, I mean, probably two hours of footage or hour and a half of footage and we plugged in those mics to the to the headphone jack on the camera, so it didn't work. <laughs> so my tireless producer went through all of the footage and added subtitles manually. And uh, so that'll be that you you would have already seen that. So that's what we're, you got going on here. If I could pan out, oh and. I'm sorry, I have the ISIS flag behind me now. Not really sorry. We're we're trying that out. Uh, it needs to be ironed or steamed, I think, because uh, it's a rather distracting pattern. And I'm sorry if you focus on that the rest of this episode since I pointed it out. And if you're listening on audio, once we get these uploaded, uh, you won't have to worry about that. But I do recommend you watch it on on YouTube because it's uh, <laughs> you'll miss seeing my beautiful face. What are you laughing at? You can't even say. Are you just looking on my Twitter? <laughs> okay. Oh, I can't see what you're looking at on Twitter because we haven't fixed. We haven't fixed our setup here. It looks. Oh, well, sorry. Not very high energy there. It looks like. What time is it here? Four, four p.m. Yeah. If I could pan out to what our what what my office looks like right now, it looks like I, my second job, my second real job was a Chinese delivery driver and I would take calls and take the orders and when I wasn't driving and the owners of the shop were named John and I forget the lady's name but it wasn't her real name and they looked like a Chinese they looked like World War II a World War II caricature poster of the Japanese even though they're Chinese like they she, he did his teeth kind of stuck out a little bit you know how they do in those posters could you pull up one of those posters is that possible we just we just literally got down our like obs scene thing yeah just look up uh Ch japanese world war ii propaganda posters let me know when you've got it up okay they close at eight great i'll go get chong Ch speaking of japanese and chinese my dog's name is chong chong since uh, we last met, we uh, we got a dog. Okay, can you pull it up on the? Is it on the desktop share? Okay, yeah, yeah. Go blow up one of the bit, one of them, or it's like watch out for the Japs. Just anyone where they have like teeth that are poking out of their mouths. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. That's kind of how. I mean. That's a strong caricature. That's kind of how the guy who I worked for looked. Anyway, there were like 20 of them here in town. They're all illegal. Um, don't you love that Biden said illegals on the State of the Union? He literally, someone said like, illegals are killing us or something. And he got flustered and like reverted back to the old language. Because I'm sure he said illegals up until like 2013. You know, or 2000, maybe at least 20, probably 2010. Now it's what undocumented immigrants. It's like when Trump uh, did the anchor baby th bit, which I could have you pull up, but it's it doesn't matter. He does the, he, he's like, these anchor babies, they're coming here. They're, they're taking our resources. 
And the lady's like, don't you, it's actually undocumented children of, of displaced persons or something, some long double speak thing. And it's like, no, you're gay. It's anchor baby. You mean it's not politically correct and yet everybody uses it? I say, so you know what? Give me a different term. Give me a different term. What else would you like to say? Oh, you want me to say that? Okay. I said, no, I'll use the word anchor baby. Excuse me. I'll use the word anchor baby. So, wait. <laughs> oh, no. Is the computer freezing again? No, there we go. All right. So, anyway. Where was oh I so I would answer the phone at this Chinese restaurant and that would be like now Monica I help you because that's how they literally would answer it. they'd be like now Monica now now Monica what's your order and I would answer the phone just like that go now Monica what's your order and they'd go oh yeah I got a general sauce chicken with a side of uh, vegetable dumplings and I'd be like okay uh, you want you want small large and they they'd pause because it would be an immediate transition from now Monica what's your order to me. Like moments later, saying that they every time they were perplexed. They some of them would go, "Uh, uh, yeah, I'll have a medium." Like <laughs> it's like the it's like the Trinidadian pilot. Like I sat there and I didn't say this is crazy or wait, no way. I just kind of paused and I pondered, and I think that's a hallmark of Western civilization, of white people in general. We tend to pause and ponder. We pause, we ponder then we pronounce okay and as i was telling my producer uh earlier as we were scrambling around going to best buy which by the way i think i i don't think i'm allowed in them anymore but i think the guy was lying so i stole a video game back in high school at the best buy here in nashville and they caught me this big black security guard he's like hey man come with me and i'm like oh shit he saw me directly pocket this game like with his eyeballs how dumb am i how stoned am i so i go with him he's even i'm six three six four and he was like six feet six he was huge he's like, hey man come come with me so i came with him they sent me back in like the grungy grimy like grimy goblin dungeon that was the manager's office and i sit down and he's like all right hand it over or the cops will be right on their They're already on their way. I'll call them off. I was probably 15, 16 years old. I'll call them off if you hand it over. That's not, I didn't know this until later. That's not how the cops work. They show up when you call them. You can't call me like, never mind, we got it back. They're going to come back. They're going to come, pro- like, get the bad guy, which was me. This is a huge tangent, but whenever anyone says, yeah, man, I, I used to run with the wrong crowd or like it's so sad he got in with the wrong crowd you know no you are the wrong crowd okay i'm never going to be like yeah i got in with the wrong crowd a bunch of weed smoking nihilists i was the weed smoking nihilist bad guy i got people high for the first time i was a piece of garbage okay until god redeemed me and i'm still struggling okay that's part of being catholic is it's not like a you have an altar call and then you're um, ready to rock. In fact, in the early church with confession, they used to only do confession once. And then you kind of had to not sin. <laughs> and then I think it was the Irish who were like, that's not going to work for us. Uh, we need it all the time. So that's when they started doing confessions more. I didn't learn. I learned that at college. So it must be true. Just kidding. But, um, Anyway, yeah, I worked for this Chinese place, and it was awful. You know, the Chinese, they're very interesting people. They're really Hans. Uh, I learned this from my friend uh, Dilly Dog. They're really Hans. That's a sub-genre of, of or sub, sub not species, but a sub-race of, of Chinese. And by the way, you can look all this up and just put me in the desktop view if you want, whenever, whenever I'm talking about something to give them context. I don't care. Anyway, they would they would cook weird weird dishes that weren't General Sal's chicken. Okay, it was like stir, it was like fish in broth, but like the fish had scales. It was a big weird Chinese fish. It wasn't like a fish you'd see at Old Hickory Lake. It was just a fish, a Chinese strange Chinese fish. It was the year of the fish, I believe. That's what the people are saying, the year of the fish. So then they had a Buddha statue in the back. 
But on like special Buddha days, they would bring it out front, like in front of the store where you walk in and the lady would light incense and then leave fruit there for like two weeks. It would mold over and rot. And there's those, uh, this is why I need show notes. Cause if I go through it, you can just click on the links to like what I'm looking for. Look up, um, look up like Asian cu- cultures where they bury people with like paper mache cars and cell phones and stuff. Just look up paper mache phone burial Asian. <laughs> that should do it. One thing about duck, we're using duck, duck go, even though it's like, like it matters, but uh, Andy or Zandy would always use duck, duck go and it would never pull up the right thing. <laughs> Granted, this was two years ago when duck, duck go first came out. Am I wrong? Is there nothing there? Like for the dead, they would like, they, okay. In some cultures, they, they make paper, paper mache, you know, like in the ancient Egyptian, you learn about the mummies and they're like, Oh, they put gold over their eyes so they can cross the river sticks and like gold coin on their tongue so they can speak the right words and get into the afterlife. Well, some cultures have like paper mache, like cell phones, um, little cars, laptops, laptops like personal effects and either they burn them or they bury them with their people as if what are you going to get there and you wouldn't it be funny if they got there and they just had a paper mache phone like is it is this real joss paper paper? how do you spell that j-o-s-s is this a whole thing a phenomenon burnt offering so they burn Okay, but they make cell phones and stuff. That might be a different thing. Anyway, I, I swear, unless this is what's it called, the Mandela effect, where it's like Baron Stain Bears or Baron Steen Bears. Like, I think it's the Baron Stain. I don't remember what it is, but everyone can remember. I saw one the other day of the Fruit of the Loom logo, where it had a cornucopia behind it, and then the logo without one. And it, I guess it's always been fruit and never a cornucopia. I don't recall, but one guy's like, I swear it was this way. Anyway, the Mandela effect. It's like when you misremember something and everyone else misremembers it because it's so plausible. Anyway, the Chinese, they burn their cell phones. I think it'd be really funny if they got into their afterlife and it's like ding, 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 ding. And they walk in like, oh, hello. Welcome. Here's your room. Oh, I see you brought your paper mache cell phone. That won't work here. <laughs> there's like there's just people with paper mache objects <laughs> forever in their return whatever their Chinese eternity is and then there's like one guy with a cell phone so he can watch Instagram but it's it's like a iPhone one so it doesn't even work anymore <laughs> like you can't get a new phone in heaven oh man I wonder what Chinese heaven is like because it ain't like num one Chinese what may I take your order okay it ain't that my wife, she went to South Korea for uh, a month and a half for this. Like, she was a public school teacher, which was a huge red pilling. I'm very grateful for that whole era. I don't think, I, the Zoomers say like, "Oh, they're, you're in your poverty era, or you're in your uh, you're in your glow up era." Well, that was a public school era, and I got so red pilled just by that alone. I probably told these stories before, so I won't tell them again. But just in case you forgot, I will tell you one. One time my wife was, uh, she was getting a Kurdish kid in trouble. So the Kurds were, they got gassed by Saddam Hussein uh, before the Desert Storm War. They, he just gassed them. They're like an ethnic minority in Iraq. And there's, I don't know how many are still there, but they call their country Kurdistan. And, but it's not a real country. It's just like, it's like a country that they call, they, or an area that's, that's around Syria. It's like, it, 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 it goes across a lot of borders. Anyway, my wife was teaching and got this kid in trouble. In fact, got the kid suspended, which is really hard to do in, in Nashville public schools for something. And all of his cousins came and they started cursing her in Arabic. And like, it was like a mini fatwa, you know, like a mini jihad. And she sat there and she's like, she's like, I mean, y'all can go ahead and kill me. I mean, y'all think y'all are the only people with martyrs? <laughs> we got martyrs over here. I don't even care. And they're like yelling at her in Arabic. She doesn't. So that was a red pill. I used to have a big beard, as you know, if you've been watching the show. But it was even bigger when I was dating my wife. And I showed up 
with these yellow tinted like Phil Spector glasses. And they thought I was Kurdish. They're like, oh, I didn't know your husband was Kurdish. She's like, he's not. Have you ever seen a six foot three Kurdish guy? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not a thing. Man, this is a huge tangent. I don't even know where I was. Chinese, China, the China virus. It comes from China. But yeah. Oh, Best Buy. So they... <laughs> <laughs> my my brother called me after I released the first ep- we released the first episode and he's like dude that was funny but I gotta tell you like you go down m- like mega rabbit holes that just then veer off and I'm like yeah that's how my brain works okay so I'm sorry in advance you- this is free by the way so you're welcome we just spent a cumulative four hours at Best Buy unpackaging shit getting everything ready to go so you're welcome. Later on, when I get canceled from YouTube, which just saying canceled from YouTube is probably going to activate the AI data scraping technology they have and flag me. So when we get canceled and we're on Rumble or Cozy.tv or whatever later on, uh, just remember this. It started like this. You saw the sets beforehand at Zandy's foul abode. Okay. Foul. Just gunshots. I mean, I saw La Cucaracha. You know, and we don't have a lot of cockroaches down here. Maybe at least the people I hang out with. But he had a cockroach scurrying around. You know, just grimy goblin cavern. Guarding his grimy goblin dungeon with his little sword. Anyway, yeah, so that was my first job. Chinese delivery driver. Second job, Chinese delivery driver. And so I named my dog. We got this dog. It's a Japanese chin. Can you look that up? What a Japanese chin looks like? Uh, orange and white Japanese chin. And I was like, so we got, we had a dog, we got rid of it cause it's, it sucked and, uh, gave it to one of my wife's friends who doesn't have any kids or a, or a husband chin, like a, like your chin, chinny, chin, chin. Yeah. And then just pull that up on the screen. Um, they are bug eyed mutants. They have, they came from wolves. Obviously we, one, uh, some wolf came up. It's probably a gay wolf. Um, like a furry came up to the fire you know and we're like oh whoa it's a wolf like oh shit we gotta kill this wolf and they're like no wait no it's mad it has rabies no it doesn't it's not foaming it's not being aggressive it's it's hungry so you toss the meat to the wolf and eventually you get a wolf buddy oh yeah that's yeah exactly the one the third one that is my dog that one right there like the third picture on down yeah or up that one yeah that's my dog. He looks like that. And it's very, very funny. It's okay. This is better. You move the screen. It's very funny. So my wife, we get rid of this other dog and my wife goes to the humane society here. Unbeknownst to me with my oldest daughter, who's the pet. She loves pets. She loves puppies. So we go and I get a FaceTime back when, before my light phone. I go, hey, why do you look like you're in jail? She's like, I'm at the Humane Society. And she turns around the camera and there's this little freaky dog. And I was like, oh my gosh, we don't need a dog. We just got rid of this other dog. She's like, I like it. It's cool. I already did the stress test. And I'm like, what's that? She's like, I got in its face. I smacked it a little bit, pulled its ears hard. It didn't bite at me. I'm like, okay, I hope you weren't on camera. Like those freaks who work there, they would kill you. They might not even call the cops. They might community police themselves and could just commit community police brutality. (laughs) Back when the George Floyd stuff happened, like we need to defund the police and have community policing. What are you going to have like these women roaming the streets? Just do you think you're going to have community policing without community policing brutality? That's not happening. You're going to get some brutality. Anyway, she got this freak dog. So I was like, all right, what's the saying of the day? Oddly enough, it was St. Paul Chong and Companions, some of the Korean martyrs. And since he's not exactly Japanese, he's still Asian. So we call him Chong Chong. Anyway, Chong Chong, he's a total mutant. He has a hard time. He sleeps like 12 hours a day, like during the day. He arches his back like a cat. So I did a little research on Chong Chong. And uh, Japanese chins were originally from China 
as were Japanese people probably. Anyway, they were bred to be like foot dogs, like to lay on your feet and to be pillow dogs for the Japanese royalty or Chinese royalty. And you got to imagine, the air conditioner wasn't invented until like the 50s. In fact, the state of Florida was the least populated state in the Union because it was so hot until Mr. Carrier invented the uh, air conditioner. That sounds like I pulled that out of my, my ass, but I didn't. It's true. Anyway, I look it up. Okay, I want to say, what can you imagine in the palaces where it's like, ding, 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 just drafty Chinese wind coming through, Chinese spirits floating around. Yeah, they so they bred these strange little Chinese dogs. So I call him Chong Chong. Well, Chong Chong's been great. Uh, he spins around because he's a freak mutant. And one of the things, I, I, Chong Chong to me, he's a faithful companion now. Like he's a great accessory for the family. The main reason I got him is so he can wake me up if there's a burglar, which is why any man gets a dog uh, deep down in their heart. I mean, like a family man. Of course, you want a companion unless you're like a big hunter. Uh, by the way, check out Venari Ammo. That's my friend's ammunition company. Uh, it's a Catholic hunting, shotgun hunting, shotgun shell company. It's great. He might have some handgun ammo now. Venari, V-E-N-A-R-I. Um, anyway, another thing with Japanese chins is Jefferson Davis owned one. Okay. The president of the Confederate States of America. So once I read that, I thought, okay, that's, <laughs> I don't feel as gay walking this dog into the groomers because we never walk him because he can, he has legs that are this long and he's not a walking dog. He just spins around and jump runs around every now and then. And then, uh, he goes to sleep. So, Chong Chong, Japanese chins, uh, Nam Wan Chinese can't help you. I don't know. That was my rant about all that. I don't even remember where I was going with that. What's going on on Twitter today? Let's scroll down. <clears throat> okay, cool. Speaking of craziness on uh, on Twitter, by the time this is released, which will probably be tomorrow or Thursday, this might be ancient news, but the Haitian cannibals. Now, I have a Haitian friend. And if you're watching this, you got to explain this to me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but apparently, there's a warlord named Barbecue who is terror. And we are in Lent. So I forget, a lot of these guys might be off socials for Lent. But if you've been off socials and you haven't had, don't, you're not in a great group text where people are texting you this crazy stuff, um, there's a guy named a big fat. Black guy, or he's not big fat. He's like a barrel bellied, maybe like me, like this, like kind of a barrel bellied guy named Barbecue, and he's running the country. And the co the president is in exile and cannot return. Yeah, that's Barbecue, Jimmy Cher I, uh, Cherizier, okay? Barbecue. Now, his people uh, were recorded like three days ago with a leg of another Haitian, like a black leg in a fire. Like, you know, you put a log in a fire and then a guy peeled off some of the flesh and ate it on the camera. Sorry. I don't know. Haiti, Haiti. It's a shit, which is a shithole. Can you look up him saying that? I bet, I bet it's scrubbed. Haiti's a shithole Trump clip. I just, Haiti. It's a shithole. Of course, it's loading so slow. Using vulgar language, <laughs> President Trump today questioned why the United States would allow people from Haiti and Africa into the country, describing those places using an expletive while suggesting people <laughs> from Norway might be more acceptable. He reportedly made the comments during a White House meeting with a bipartisan group of senators. The White House tonight is not denying the president made the remarks. And we want you to know our report includes that expletive once so that you can hear the complete quote for yourself. And of course, it may not be appropriate for some of our younger viewers. NBC's Peter Alexander has details. The president tonight apparently uncorking another astonishing statement. No, well, I'm going to watch lawmakers in the Oval Office about protections for immigrants. Why do we want these people from, quote, <laughs> all these shithole countries here? 
According to a Democratic aide familiar with the conversation, him so badly. Mr. Trump was referring to African nations and Haiti before suggesting the U.S. should have more people from places like Norway, Minister whose Stolberg, prime minister he met yesterday. Norway. A White House Based. spokesman tonight not denying the president's words, but saying certain Washington politicians choose to fight for foreign countries. But president I love that. Always fight That's such a American good quote. People. It comes as lawmakers try to hammer out an immigration deal. With time running out oh, so they're saying they're only going to say shithole once on the broadcast? They're not even... The I guess it wasn't filmed. Anyway, I miss him. With President Trump fiercely criticizing I miss the Trump. Foreign surveillance he is the total Arch Boomer Biff Tannen from Back to the Future, which was based on Trump, actually. Uh, funny enough. And Biden is the ultimate like Yankee senile cafeteria Catholic Boomer. And these Arch Boomers just clashing. It's so awesome. And everyone's like, boomers are the worst, boomers. Oh, you bought your house for blueberries back in the 70s and no one has any, you know, all that. I get it, okay? You think the boomers, like you're at, what the, f hold on. Hello? All right, bye. Okay. Anyway, these boomers, these boomers, like, you know, it's kind of a boomer fallacy in the same way that people are like, slavery was like terrible, you know? Just every, you know, we were enslaved by everybody. It's crazy. When really it was only like 3% of Americans owned slaves, including black people and Jews and all that. Like that's who owned slaves that not many people own slaves. And in the same way, not many boomers like were pulling the levers of inflation. Okay. And pulling the levers on like, you know, camping out at these homes. And everyone's like, well, you know, the boomers have all the wealth and it's like, yeah, they're the oldest people. Okay, that's what happens. When you guys are older, like the Zoomers of the, the Zoomiest Zoomers who are watching this, bet, if you will, that you, when you're my age, you'll feel like, oh my gosh, this is, a, this country's a shithole. Hold on. Hello? Okay, groomer. Anyway, the arch boomer, like, they bought their homes for blueberries. Where are they going to go now? Where are they going to sell their house and move somewhere? They're just living there. They're on pensions. They're on social security. Sorry. Yeah. They, and like the whole Karen phenomenon, everyone's like, oh, they're such a Karen. Like they want to talk to the wait, the manager. Okay. I like, I understand the K word. Okay. Everyone says the N word. I think the real word with the letter in front should be the K word. Okay. Because the Karen thing, the slur, it really is an anti-white woman kind of slur. Like it's, I guess if everyone was like, that lady's such a Shaniqua. I mean, straight up, it would be like, oh, that lady who won't stop yelling in the movie theater is such a Shaniqua. Or, I don't know, that lady who gets up and laughs and starts running around while she's laughing at the restaurant is a, such a Shaniqua. Like if we started saying that, maybe we just start saying that. I mean, if we're going to use Karen, I mean, I'm fine with like uh, racially derogatory language because it's just rude. It's rude. That's all it is. Um, the N word, which I'm going to not say again on this show, I guess, Ugh, gives me the ick to not to have to say the N word. All right. So you know how the Jews in Israel back in the day, the Hebrews rather, they couldn't say the word of God. So they'd use Yahweh. And they probably wouldn't say that. They'd just be like God. But like Yahweh is the tetragrammon or whatever, Y-W-H-W or whatever. That was their sacred word. Like if you said it out loud, you'd be, unless I guess you were like the Levite priest, like the high priest or whatever, you would get pilloried. You you'd might get stoned to death. Like the Salem witch trials, by the way, I think there were real witches there. Everyone's like, oh, it's a witch hunt. Yeah, <laughs> there were probably some real witches there cursing people and making them turn into frogs or something. But now in our civic religion, the sacrament is abortion. Okay, that's the sacrifice. And the, the, the forbidden, the blasphemy is not taking our Lord's name in vain. It's saying the N word. Okay, I'm saying this now so I can keep on YouTube. Wait till we get to cozy. Okay. Or wherever this thing lands. All right. The N word is the sacred name that you must not utter 
uh, unless it's the priestly class, which is now black people. Okay. Uh, black woman magic, black girl magic. Like it's like a Keck magic or, um, uh, Twitter or whatever they said back in 2015, 2016, when the meme wars began with the frog, with Pepe, the frog meme magic, like it's black girl magic. And only they can utter the sacred name, the name above every other name in this civic religion is the N word. Okay. Don't you see it's inverted. Like like people think that they've obliterated ever since the French Revolution, everyone's like, no, like we're reasonable, we're reasonable people. But you'll hear I was listening to the local radio station today, the like indie one where they you know, anyway, and they the guy was like I reviewed the Leonard Bernstein uh biopic that's an Oscar nominated movie. And at first there was a kerfluffle about the actor who's a Gentile playing a Jew. Oh, can you look that up? Because he wore a prosthetic nose. <laughs> uh, yeah, Leonard Bernstein movie, Oscars, uh, nose controversy. There it is. Bradley Cooper breaks silence on maestro nose controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at a picture of him with the nose on. <laughs> okay, so there's Bradley Cooper normally, and then I guess that's his prosthetic nose. I mean, you didn't even have to go there, really. I mean, I guess you want to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But the, the, the guy, the DJ, who's like totally blue-pilled, lockstep kind of foot soldier of this of this civic religion, even though he sounds like a really friendly guy, I'd probably have a good conversation with him. He's like, there was an initial splash about the use of Bradley Cooper's prosthetic Jewish nose. But then the ADL said that there was no problem with it. And, and uh, the Bernstein family themselves, who he collaborated with extensively on the movie, had no problem with it so i have no problem with it that's what he said on air and i thought to myself that's it it's kind of like a catholic when i don't know i'm just trying to think like even catholics aren't like that we're like like with the pachamama or the like gay marriage blessing thing everyone's like what does that mean wait a minute we're not all like okay it's fine now like that's fine uh because the because the Vatican said so. The Vatican said it was cool. Like the ADL said it was fine, so I say it's fine. That's what this guy said. He's it's the civic religion. We're we're in you know there are these debates over like, you know, I think we should just, you know, do this and that, vigilantism, which I'm not gonna mention on YouTube. Because I want to stay on here. By by Catholics, like, well, we just need to do this. It's like, no, you don't need to go be violent and crazy because we're not in the Holy Roman Empire. We're not in uh, King Louis, France, all right? We're in a pagan country. Like, the millennials my age, we still have this kind of vestige of like, yeah, we'll go to church on Sunday, on uh, Easter and Christmas for our boomer parents so they don't get mad at us or whatever. So I'm not written out of the will. Um but the Zoomers are totally detached. They're like, I'm not going to church. Mm -mm, that's boring and oppressive and gay and fake or whatever. So you're welcome. The Boomers are the Boomers are literally the glue keeping this thing together. Everyone's complaining about the Boeing DEI incidents with the cargo and the freaking door blowing off and all that. Yeah, do you think it's bad now? First of all, that those are such like. Those are statistically anomalous things. And I think after the door blew off in such dramatic fashion, everyone's eagle eye on every little thing that goes wrong with a plane. I think that's what's going on. But like everyone's like, it's DEI now. Yeah, maybe. But it's I saw there's a really popular YouTuber who's a plane mechanic. He's got Hesher hair. Like his hair's down to his tummy. And he's like, yes, yeah, so uh, the actuator for the flap uh, it uses a combination of hydraulics and um, redundant uh, electrical in, uh, engines to work it. And here's how it works. And he's like the guy. He's got Hesher hair. Now, there's nothing wrong with Hesher hair. I, you know, especially if Hallowed's watching this. 
He's got some. He, his hair's not really Hesher because it doesn't go past his shoulders really. I, maybe it does. But Hesher hair is just like super long, like head banging hair. Now, I look at that video and I'm like, that's not DEI. That's like a nerd white guy. But his hair's so long, like you have more restrictions at a deli than a place with a kerosene where kerosene rockets are being fixed, I guess. Like you're going to just have your hair dangling down for your Instagram video in the machine shop for an airplane, the most unfathomably complex machine I could ever think of. Like I, we just assembled these monitor stands for my computer, for my desk and bought, I bought these two monitors. It took me mm, 15 minutes to get them together. The, and it, it, they were like five parts, okay? And they came with the tools, and it's like, of course, engineered for the lowest common denominator of IQ. Like, it's for dumb people to put it together, that, which is great. Keep doing that. It makes it easier on everybody. Um, but if you're if you're an engine mechanic, an airplane mechanic, that doesn't. That, I don't feel great about that white guy. You know, I think we have a uh, this idea that like, oh, if they're white guys or whatever, they're going to do a great job. Not necessarily. I want like, I think it'd be a really funny joke if you're a pilot and you're watching this. I think it'd be a really funny joke to when you're in the cockpit, <clears throat> okay, and before the other guy, especially if you're like the captain or the guy in charge, or at least not the like lowest man on the totem pole. Like you've got some s- security. If you're watching a YouTube video and you hear the guy like walk in and talk to the stewardess and is like. Oh, hey, how's it going? They're like, hey, long day. Oh, you know, I'm just getting started, you know. Yeah, got my coffee, ready to go. How's everything going? How's the plane? It's good, you know, passenger, it's been it's been good. You know, just got in from Buffalo, blah, blah. Once you hear that, like hear the, the pre-cockpit entry banter, pull up on YouTube, How to Fly an Airplane 101, and then press start as he's entering. It's like, today we're going to be, make sure you have, you're, you get past the ads first. Today, we're going to learn how to fly an airplane. <laughs> That'd be a funny bit. And if you film it and send it to us bonus points, <laughs> we will feature it. That'd be really funny. Anyway, everyone's like, oh, no. It's like all everything's going downhill. And like, yeah, everything is going downhill. And Karen's, this all goes back to the Karen thing. Karen's, what they're really like, unless they're like neurotic people, like severely just entitled brat neurotic people who are being absolutely uh, illogical, which is what the true Karen is. Just like the true Shaniqua is like what you think of. The true Karen, I suppose, is that archetype. But the Karen word gets thrown around now anytime any white person complains about anything. That isn't up to like Western Civ, like Anglo Euro white kind of like procedural standards, and it's a crisis of uh, incomp. It's a, a competency crisis that we have in this country that everyone feels, everyone understands, and like because uh, the Boomers grew up in a time like they grew up in the fifties and sixties, like as children, right, and then in the seventies into the seventies when it was still like con- like people were smoking weed and stuff, but like. You know, because of the uh, of the astroturfing, like documentary stuff. Ever the sixties, everyone thinks the sixties were like just like tr- in tr- like staunch racist people, or like the the enlightened hippies. When it was just like people like you and I, just living normal lives with the technology we had, and like you know, most more people were married. It was you know, and you you were expected to be polite when you were customer facing in some sort of retail position or else you got fired because there were other people who had been raised to be polite, who would go take that job. Now we don't have that. We don't have the polite, like, Oh, can I help you? I think the only competent businesses that normal people, uh, interact with on a client facing basis, like uh, customers facing basis is Publix, Chick-fil-A and uh, Culver's. That's it. Chick-fil-A, Publix, and Culver's. That's unless you live like in the Midwest where you still have white teenagers who are like, yes, sir. Here, I, that I happened to me. I went to the Chester Conference in Milwaukee. And Milwaukee's a seems like a pretty drunk place. There were like beer bars everywhere. And of course, it's like a Catholic place. 
So <laughs> every like in the South, it's kind of nice because like you have dry counties and like it's kind it's still frowned upon to just like walk around drunk unless you're in like Broadway. Uh, so like the Catholic like drinking diffuse culture that you see in these legacy Catholic places isn't there. So I, I was kind of stunned to see all these like shitty beer bars. They they all have these signs that are like this big, and it'll be like Bill's Bar, Green Frog Bar in the same font. It's like a it's like the Indian owned like smoke shops around Nashville. Like they all have the same font, they all have the same LED lights in those smoke shops. It's the same like grimy goblin caverns where like I don't know if women go there or not. I didn't go into those. Anyway, I'm up there and I go to a Brugger's Bagels, which is. In the city, it's not like in the burbs. It's like in the city, but like not downtown. Everyone there was like a 15 to 18 year old white teenager. And I was like, hey, so can I, they're like, hi, sir, how can I help you? And I'm like, I thought this only happened at Chick fil A. Nope. It happens in Brugger's Bagels in Milwaukee. So the Midwest, I guess, hits different on that. And if you're watching this from the Midwest, tell me if that's the case in the comments if you've made it this far in the video. What are we on time, by the way? <laughs> vacation in Haiti. Vacation. <laughs> are you screen sharing? Are you screen share that? <laughs> what are they saying? Is it is there audio? Yeah, hit the audio. Uh, and then they're going to eat <laughs> Dude, they literally they're eating people in Haiti. My wife went to Haiti for a, two weeks for like a mission trip. We were dating. We weren't married yet. If it were me now, I'd be like, you're not going to Haiti. What? I was like, okay, whatever. She flew to Port-au-Prince and had a, a six foot three gay bodyguard named Ernst. And he had a fully automatic MP5, like 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 the police in uh in Europe use. MP5 fully out full auto and a shotgun. Uh, slung around like in Godfather, just like slung around his shoulder. And I wonder what his accent was like. You know, it was French, you know, but it was probably gay. Yeah. So like a, like a gay French black guy accent, like, oh, you look so fabulous. I can't even, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, she went there and I, and when she got back, the stories she told me were stunning, not brave, not stunning and brave, stunning and repulsive. They shit on the beach. That's the toilet. So there's poo poo everywhere on the beach. They just go and poo poo into the ocean or not onto the beach the tide will take it i guess and she knows that because she went and got on a boat so this big gay haitian had to like carried her up like a baby into the boat and they took a boat to another island or something where they wanted her to go into a voodoo temple and she's like no thanks i don't want to go into the voodoo temple with the deep where the demons literally live that's where they say they hang out there Man, demons are so crazy. Demons, what? <laughs> the Twitter memes now that Musk owns this are just so incredible. <laughs> They're so incredible. We need to do a feature next episode, which will be probably tomorrow, on the Wojaks. Just all the different Wojaks and how the soy face Wojaks and all those Wojaks are so awesome and how it's so incredible that there's been a like reality renaissance like a right-wing renaissance in the face of the internet like i've said this before on the show i think but there's a really great book called uh kill all normies by patricia nagel can you look that up kill all normies book kill all anyway the premise of the book is that she was she's a left-wing academic and the premise of the book is that in the 90s the futurist intelligentsia blue pilled class was like, Oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. Look, just look up the, t the title image. Yeah. It's got a frog, which is a Pepe, like kind of nod to Pepe, the frog. Anyway, the premise, what she says is the premise, the premise of the book is that in the nineties, these, these blue pilled, where are we on time? Okay, the blue these blue pill normie intelligentsia expert class kind of people were like, oh, okay, we have PCs now and these laptops. What we're gonna do is we're gonna airdrop Lenovo laptops into uh, 
to the to Uganda and harvest cardiologists. Like everyone's going to just become super geniuses like us because our parents cared about us and we had, you know, we had tutors and, and all that. No, that's not what happened. What happened is um, all the siloed information, like you're watching this, it's got whatever, how many views, but you're watching this. This wouldn't be on ABC News. This wouldn't be like Bryant Gumble or whatever that guy's name is going, I must say the words are shocking. We're going to produce a whole little segment on the news about him saying that Haiti's a shithole with like footage from the White House. That's what I find so funny. Trump, <laughs> Trump's like, Haiti, it's a shithole. And ABC News is like, okay, this is perfect. Um, we're going to go spend $200,000 now for a thirty for a six-minute segment on why it was bad that he said it was a shithole country. <laughs> Whereas I'm spending it nothing telling you about it right now. Anyway, so the all the information was siloed in ABC News and the newspapers, which were filtering everything. And so once you got the internet, you got Wikipedia, you got forums, you got whatever. Now, you know, Musk has made it much easier to go find the truth by letting, you know, taking all the censors away. Everything be, like fell down to the original sin. Like, because the Rousseauian understanding of human nature, which these people hold, is that man everywhere is in shackles and he'll be free if he's just free of the structural issues that are going on. And I won't deny that there are structural issues. Um, for instance, I can't say the N word, <laughs> I can't utter the tetragrammon of the civic religion. I'm structurally oppressed. Lit like, I literally cannot say that. Well, I can, I mean, but I can't say that in uh it's like the same in the middle ages. Okay. If some guy killed you, killed your wife in the middle ages and you were like, you, you uttered the name of the Lord in vain and you're like, and then JC, he just came in with his spear and his little broadsword and dagger. And he, he doth, he doth daggered my wife to death. They'd go, huh? To the gallows, my guy. Are you insane? He's going to smite us. Like, we just got over the bubonic plague. Are you serious, dude? Like, that just lifted. And now you're going to, like, cast this stuff? Like, did you not read about Sodom and Gomorrah? That's how they would react and respond. You couldn't just take the Lord's name in vain in a public statement about your wife getting killed. And just like now, you can't say that the tetragrammon of the new civic religion in the same respect. So uh, where was I? What was I even talking about? We can excise this at the so, uh, I guess. I don't know. Anyway. Oh, kill all normies. But that's not what happened. What happened is, like, we have Twitter now. We have right-wing Twitter with the funniest memes. And I was talking to a seminarian friend of mine the other day. That was actually last year. And he was talking about this woman he knew who became trans before it became like a huge, like talking point in the house, like a whatever. And, uh, he like, he goes, yeah, it was weird. She was still very like wifely and would like cook us food and like see if we needed a drink or not. And like, you know, want to make everything comfortable for everybody in the house but she wanted us to pretend her name was James instead of Jamie. And it was like, it was like I, when I was there, it was like, it was opposite day. I said, Oh yeah. Opposite day. These people, when you're in third grade and someone, and you're playing tag and you're like sweaty and you're like, <laughs> Oh man, I can't believe you got me. I, I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know you could climb up the, the monkey bars like that. <laughs> You got me. Hey, you want to play opposite day? Yeah, sure. You're so uh, pretty. <laughs> Everybody likes you. <laughs> I hate the color red. <laughs> like that's, a, that's what the kids in office say when they play opposite day. You can sustain that as a third grader max like three minutes until you're like, okay, I'm going to go eat water and you want to go on the swings? Max. Because it takes too much processing power to do that. Because you have to think, all right, what's the opposite thing? But that's what this this regime, this civic religion regime, 
wants us to do. They want us to pretend it's opposite day every day. They want you to be concerned about the opposite day rules. They want, and if you don't pretend it's opposite day, you get punished. You get canceled. And, oh, by the way, pull this up on the screen share. A politician today, this should strike fear in every man's heart who's watching this video. Not strike fear, but give you pause. A politician, just t look up politician arrested for racist meme. Yeah, and then go to the all section. It'll be in the news. Nope, that ain't it. They, wow, they're like not. All right, uh, sentenced to one year in prison. That's what happened. I think it was in um, the Netherlands. I think it was in the Netherlands. Nether yeah, look up Netherlands. Yes. Okay. Fox News. Is this shared? Belgian far-right activist sentenced to one year in jail for racist speech. Go down. It was a meme he was sharing in a private boys chat. Is this, is this recent? Yeah. Yeah. Go down. There he is. That homie posted a spicy racist meme in his group chat and it leaked and he got put in prison for one year. So you know all those memes that are like when the feds finally find the boys chat or whatever and it's people like running for their lives or like that happened to this guy. That is the regime right there. Now, it's up to us whether that's going to come here or not, really. And the only thing that's going to keep it coming here from here is if there's enough family networks with stakes in the game that don't allow it. It's with any degeneracy, whether there are families with stakes who have, who have skin in the game to keep this stuff from being imported or intellectually colonized. Like, you know, the whole concept of the lib hick, the left wing, like rural guy. Yeah, if you go to any small town now, there's going to be pride flags, stickers, and like maybe a pride flag hanging from a, uh, a house and all that. And because we're in the pagan civilization, no one feels comfortable going and ripping it down and like getting arrested and, and jeopardizing their their family or their income or whatever. Because now, because when the state can do that or there's enough there's enough momentum like the state like when trump got elected people felt a lot more free to start speaking their mind the way it really is and for a minute there when the establishment was stunned there wasn't repercussions but then and there probably were swift repercussions shortly after but i'm, I'm sure there was like a pause for maybe a month then after that they ratcheted it up because they have the private sector and the private sector dictates whether families can can survive and thrive but now we live in the pagan, we live in Roman times. And so it's not a per, like the, the, the Christians didn't go around like, you know, vigil being vigilantes back then. Why they, their whole, their whole witness was the martyrdom of charity and charity it was martyrdom and charity. That was their whole witness. And so that's kind of the, that's the dimension of this whole right wing discourse that I want to bring with the show is that, you know, you've got your Mapaladin avatar, or even worse, my anime avatar, like a non right wing, a non guy. <clears throat> and I get that. At the same time, like, we're not going to crusade anytime soon. There's no crusades coming from the Vatican. There's no crusades coming from popular figures in America. There's no room for this vigilantism mindset. Honestly, like the mindset now has to be martyrdom and charity and if you get martyred at your job you're economically martyred because you said something that wasn't that was true but not not popular then more power to you and that's what it's going to take that's why i restarted the show because i realized man i could hunker down and like you know st play it safe and all that and that's fine and i and i and a lot of people should hunker down to the best of their ability not get not, not everyone needs to get in front of a camera and maybe some of you think i shouldn't be here but You've watched an, an hour of this so far, so unless you like right wing watch or something like, <laughs> okay, uh, hate watching is fine with me too. It gets my views up. 
not everyone should go like par- like shout from the rooftops that the emperor has no clothes. Sometimes it's more prudent just to stay to hang tight and hang tough, right? And not go on and do whatever little things you can do within your workplace not to acquiesce to this regime. But at the same time, the 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 understanding, yeah, we need Matt, we need we need heroic masculinity now. And that's something that's being beat out of us by the longhouse tactics of the school teacher, uh, women, you know, that you're dating, they'll try to beat it out of you. Some wives try to beat it out of you. No, you have to be masculine, even if people hate you and assert what's true, even if they're going to punish you. But of course there's prudence involved in that because at the end of the day, our, our primary vocations as family men are to, to provide for our families. So we're just going to have to live like the Christians did. And it might get worse. We might have some sort of El Salvador renaissance with Bukele, uh, who arrested every MS-13 member in the country, and now it's the safest country in the Americas. That's what happened. If we get something like that, and Trump, apparently, if he gets elected, he's going to start deporting people. And, you know, if he gets elected again, it, they thought he was crazy the first time. Nah. And after he's gone... The next crop after Gen X has their way, like the millennials and especially Gen Z, mm-mm. they're they're gonna they're gonna look at Trump like they do at George W. Bush now. George W. Bush will sit next to Michelle Obama at a football game and rest his head on her shoulder, and everyone's like, "Ah, it's kind of cute." Uh, I was in high school when George Bush was the president. People wanted him dead. They thought he was the most moronic evil person on the planet now i'm not a huge fan of the bush dynasty but i did see a clip of him the other day that kind of endeared him to me uh he was he was when he was shooting the golf ball at the he was driving a golf ball at the tee stand and he's like you have any words for the for the you know iraqi conflict he's like the terrorists must be uh, destroyed to the very end now watch this drive and he went and (laughs) hit a golf ball it endeared me to him. I was like, oh, yeah, he was kind of like a normal guy in a way that people aren't normal now. They're going to think of Trump that way. They'd be like, oh, we did like The Apprentice. His stuff was kind of funny. He was kind of a funny guy. We were just a little, you know, we won't even mention that we were so uptight about it because this new guy, he's straight up like Mussolini. We thought Trump was Hitler. <laughs> We thought Trump was orange man bad and he was literally Hitler. Oh, whoops. Now we have a literal Nazi in office. Like who is literally a Nazi. Like they keep saying literal Nazi over and over. And it's kind of like the bell, Witch, which is like a, it's a myth here and that, or wow, actually don't do anything I'm about to say, but when we're in middle school, they'd be like, if you want, if you want to get scared, go to the go to the locker the bathroom and turn the lights off and spin around three times and say bell witch or whatever and into the mirror and she'll appear to you. That's what they're doing with actual Nazi and Nazi this Nazi that they're actually just summoning one. They're conjuring one. And you saw it with Trump because like these racist white people, they're awful. Everyone's bad. All the white people are bad. Christopher Columbus is bad. The founding fathers are bad. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's bad. And then what happened? We got sick and tired of it, and we went, yeah, we're bad. Here's our bad guy. Just wait till the populace actually elects a bad guy, okay? That's all I'm going to say. You tra- you trad cath, you know, the trad cat, like, like warriors, they're going to get, you're going to go. You're not going to be, it's kind of like the fantasy of the communists where they're like, when, when the communist world is, is realized, I'm going to be the commune poet. I'm going to be the poet on the commune. No, you're not. You're going to be put to the, to the lithium ion mines and your hands and feet are going to fall off and your face is going to melt like the guy in uh, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay. That's what's going to happen to them. And the whole like, yes, I'm the philosopher king that this country needs. I don't want to be president and I like my own opinions. I don't think I, I'm not qualified for that. I don't want that. That sucks. That would suck to be the president or the mayor where you're having to go to these functions all the time and glad hand and like shake hands and eat exotic cuisine. Like it's good. Do you have any time? I bet at the white house they have guest chefs and stuff like, 
hey, there's, there's this new curry place down the road. And Joe Biden doesn't know what's going on. But when he sits down, he's like, oh, what's this? You forgot to cook it. <laughs> and they're like, Mr. President, this is a very esteemed uh, local diversity chef that we're you, you got to put up with that stuff. And there's no like you think you're the philosopher king, maybe it's going to be some like meathead football guy, some jock who's like six, five and is built and he's going to be like, all right, listen up, homos. <laughs> You're all, no nerds allowed. Like, we're not doing nerd. None of the nerd stuff is happening anymore. If you are online as an Anon, like, posting about anime, you're out. You're going to the camp. You're not allowed to post anime stuff. And I heard from a Zoomer, a reputable Zoomer, that every Zoomer watches anime now. I will die on this hill. Anime is gay. It's gay. Cartoons are for children. And I get it. Okay, there's some like really great animated stuff. And what you, look, I hate olives, the food. I hate them. I like olive oil. I hate olives. I would never eat an olive. My wife loves olives, loves them. She'll eat any kind. My middle daughter, she'll wake up in the morning and I'll turn the corner and she's still in her PJs with her hair messy. She's eating olives out of a little thing ugh, makes me want to barf oh you pulled up gaston <laughs> yeah gaston's gonna be your your king okay and he's not gonna be like citing the summa okay he's gonna be like that's weird we're not doing that okay you're not allowed to wear maroon dress shirts anymore <laughs> and be a weird nerd okay that's what's gonna happen so my wife loves olives and she cannot convince me that olives are good i don't even remember where i was going with that I don't what yeah i don't remember like who's gonna be president in this election oh i don't remember i don't remember where i was going with that olives basically like you can't force me to think oh anime it's and my wife when we first started dating she's like no no you have to try this blue ch- blue cheese stuffed olive and i'm like i don't want so i tried it we're at like the whole foods olive bar Ugh. and before bezos bought it and and i'm like okay and i tried all these olives because i was you would call it simping but i was genuinely curious would i like an olive if it was the right olive no i hate all the olives there's no anime you could put in the comment section that would make me love anime and be like oh well this kind's good look the Japanese had a warrior, talk about monarchy. They had a monarchy warrior cu- culture and class that was almost totally killed or they killed themselves with the seppuku, which is too, that's almost too much that I know that. That's almost weeaboo territory that I know that Japanese word. They killed themselves with their ritual weird pagan sacrifice, which by the way, this prominent Catholic catechist in town tried to defend with me on Facebook one time about this girl who killed herself in Oregon when they passed the euthanasia law. He's like, well, in Japan they kill themselves and it's an honorable thing there. Yeah. They're pagans, dude. What? What do you want? What? If your son fail, like was an airplane, Hesher airplane mechanic and he forgot to put on the windscreen, right? And it flew off and the plane crashed or whatever. You want him to go, disembowel himself and then have someone cut his head off no you want him to apologize and then not be an airplane mechanic again and to go to therapy and stuff because he's going to be messed up the rest of his life he killed 250 people or whatever so no and they all the good all the like strong chad japanese people died in world war ii to the to the death or they killed themselves and now what we have is like ah ooh. And you have these nerds in Japan who are right, who are drawing these big doe-eyed, big boob, like figures, and they're like, "Oh, it's like a British comedy." I'm convinced that there's no one in the West who, or like in America, who really prefers British comedy to American comedy. There's like no way someone's like, "Oh yes, I just love how dry." Like Monty Python's funny to an extent. But it's so, you have to have like been there. It's like people, to me, people who, you may disagree with this, but people who laugh at British comedy 
it's like people who are laughing at a joke where you had to be there or a story where you had to be there for it to be really funny. And they're laughing their ass off like it's the funniest thing ever, even though you had to be there to get it. So anyway, I've been rambling. This is the Ramble Show. But uh, thanks for listening. Don't be a weeaboo. Anime is still gay. Say your prayers. <laughs> Move your body. Touch grass. Nighty night, baby. I love you. Son of a... Haiti? It's a shithole.